Man, I've been watching way too much YouTube. So when we talk about YouTube, there is something very important that we have to keep in mind. YouTube is kind of like a sneak peek into a person's life and their opinions. And like you right now watching this video, this is a sneak peek into who I am as a person. And hopefully you'll say he's literally just like me and will put me in your based folder with like Patrick Bateman and uh, Ryan Gosling. That's the important part of YouTube is that you get a sneak peek into whoever these people are their content, their ideas, and their opinions, right? Which is also why a lot of radical Republicans are like hiding behind thumbnails, but that's a completely other topic that we're not ready for right now. What I wanna talk about is, is how big do you have to be to make worse content? And I've seen this trend happening quite a lot. You know, the saying of how everything wants to evolve into a crap. I feel like every YouTuber after a certain point wants to evolve into a reaction YouTuber. Completely use their unique sense of style and what makes them then because it's easier. And I want to talk a little bit about why people tend to make worse content and what the reasons might be. And maybe you've even noticed this yourself, that there is uh, YouTubers that you used to love and now you can't really vibe with their content anymore. I'll say this as an example. I've been watching YouTube for a long time because it's easier than like watching other stuff. If I go on Netflix, I'll be scrolling for 24 minutes and then I will find a movie that I probably hate. Uh, on YouTube, I can I can just have the male gaze on and just watch like, oh, this dude is building a car out of fucking car parts. Wait, no, that doesn't sound that interesting. Okay, this dude is building a car out of silly bands. I'll probably be sitting there watching, oh, God, God damn, crazy. How did you build that out of silly bands, right? Sometimes my wife comes in and she's like, what the fuck are you watching? And I'm just sitting there watching the most erratical shit ever. The true male gaze. But I think it's quite funny with uh, YouTubers because there is obviously some people that don't fall into this trap, but I feel like a lot of people kind of do after a certain while. And I want to kind of, this is everything that I'm going to be talking about. So if there's something that you find interesting, then you could just skip to the video and then I'll be talking about that. For me personally, I really like um, video essays, I, which is also why I'm making video essays. But personally, I really like editing. Not that I'm that good of an editor, but I think it adds a personal touch. And a trend that I've noticed, well, I wouldn't say a trend, I would say the norm I've noticed is that when a YouTuber hits a certain level, it might be because that they don't want to make it or they don't want to do it or they think it's boring. But a lot of them kind of outsource their editing to other people. And for me personally, that loses a lot of the uniqueness in the content. There's some people that do it really well. I would say cold ones where you easily can see like which different editor it is and they have also written down who the editors is. But there's a lot of people you wouldn't notice that actually have editors, like boring content where there's basically like no clips and no nothing. It's just a dude talking, wait. That's literally me. Content where people don't really need an editor, but it's to kind of make up like saving time so they can create more content, right? I just feel like the second you put it out there, then you don't get so involved with your own content anymore, which will in turn make your content less creative, less unique and less you. And when something becomes less you as a creator, how much less you can it really be before it's not you? It's kind of like the thesis paradox, which is basically a ship where the philosophy goes that how much of the ship can you replace and when will that ship stop being you? Well, not you as the viewer, you, you get what I mean. How much can you remove from yourself, from the brand, and it'll still be you? I feel a lot of YouTubers like fall into this pit where like, oh, I don't really want to edit anymore. And then they find someone else to edit for them. But that in turn also loses a lot of what makes them them, you know? Another thing I want to quickly go on about is watching fan content and reaction. Because as I said earlier that everyone wants to be a reaction channel, I mean, it kind of just happens with virtually everyone I watch. Maybe I just have bad taste in YouTube and in the people that I like, but I've noticed this growing trend where people make really good content, really interesting content, and then they hit the 1 million subscriber mark and then they just start reacting to videos. I really enjoy watching PewDiePie growing up. Obviously, I was also like 12. I probably wouldn't enjoy his content as much as I did at that point, but I was like doing the bro fist on my own camera and shit like that because I was mad alone because I was just 
quirky like that but then when he started doing his meme stuff where he was just going onto reddit and reacting to memes without really giving any context i noticed a stark change instead of doing what i liked from him which was the world building and the narratives and the storytelling that he put into his videos it kind of just became him being like okay i guess what am i <laughs> laughing at today and then his entire fan base would be like oh laugh at me laugh at me and then he'll just be like <laughs> That's a funny meme. And then scroll down to the next one and be like, <laughs> that's a funny meme. For a while, I'm pretty sure that he completely stopped doing anything gameplay related and he would only do content with watching other people's content. Obviously, right now, the whole big debacle is with Sniper Wolf, which has made a million trillion dollars on literally giving no content but we also talked about reaction youtubers so much so how come everyone that has even clowned on these people become these people keep this in mind if i for some reason would ever blow up and i started like just making reaction content then fucking i was about to say shoot me don't do that but call me out on it okay but sniper wolf is obviously like the big talk of the town right now she does exactly that i don't feel like there was that big of a difference from uh, pewdiepie doing meme reviews and sniper wolf just talking about random content it's the exact same thing. The difference is just who made the content. Is it someone you don't know but is a fan of you or is it someone that you don't know that you have no idea about and you're just watching it? In my head, it's virtually the same thing. Have you noticed how many scandals there are all the time with every single YouTuber? You know, there's the meme of like, you know, you're going down two paths and then one is making a music career and the other one is touching children. Every YouTuber is like, oh, I don't know which one to take. I don't know. I don't know, man. Why are there so many scandals all the time? There was the ukulele girl, uh, which I can't remember her name of. And there was like fucking everyone, man. I think it's obviously times changing and then people do stuff and talk about stuff and say weird shit that they probably shouldn't be. And then later on in life, you know, that comes back to bite their ass. I mean, I was streaming for three years. I don't remember every single thing I've said. Maybe there's something incriminating in there, right? Hopefully not. Please don't go back and look. But I think it's crazy with how many scandals scandals there are. It's also insane to think that all of these scandals kind of pop up. Sexual harassment and violence and abuse and fucking grooming and shit like that. Sorry, I had to pop my ear. I think it's a mixture of the times changing, but I also think it's a mixture of, well, obviously doing bad stuff, like don't do bad stuff, duh. But I also think it's a mixture of how much the viewers, like how dependent they are on you. Like how fast are they ready to turn on you as a YouTuber? And I think because of that, a lot of YouTubers, when they get to a certain size, they don't really want to risk it anymore. And I'm not saying that you need to go out and say the N-word. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that I think at a point, it makes more sense to try to hit a broader audience and make more boring content because then there's a less of a chance of you saying something that could potentially be incriminating. And talking about mainstream, I've noticed a lot of the people that I watched uh, when I was growing up, they were usually very niche because I'm like that type of guy. I'm very normal, I swear. But you can probably find my like autism stand, you know, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure stand diagram somewhere. But I've noticed that sometimes a lot of the people would do what's easier and what's, you know, easier and well, lazier, right? Because that will give them the views that they need to survive. It'll give them the, the views that they need to uh, still feel like they mean something which is obviously very depressing but if you've been a youtuber for let's say like 10 years and that's the only thing you've done maybe you don't even have a university degree or a college degree or whatever right what are you supposed to do there was this big controversy uh, about boogie now i don't know anything about boogie other than like you know what i've heard on the official podcast boogie is fighting for his life right now because he has nothing he's always just done youtube that's what he's been living off the last like 10 15 years maybe even right what if his career is like completely over where does he go i think a lot of people kind of look at that as like worst case scenario and then take the easy route doing reaction kind of like xqc is like the easiest because you've already built a platform you already have people that are gonna watch your video why spend a week researching writing manuscript trying to figure out jokes trying to make it entertaining trying to be like wow you know or you could just watch youtube and say, oh, that's funny. Oh, have you looked at this person, guys? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> if it gives you the same amount of views, maybe the other video will give you 
let's okay let's let's be reasonable if you make a really good video let's say that'll give you like 5 million views right but if you upload every day and that'll give you 2 million views then a week's worth you will still be making more money if you do the lazy content because you're producing more you're getting technically more content out even though i feel like it's anti-content but that's like my own personal opinion so i think a lot of people see that as a way of like the easy way why put in all this work where i have to think and i have to do this when i can literally just do this other thing that's way easier and will get me even more yeah you might lose some subscribers and you might lose some of the people that actually care about you but at the end of the day if you're still making more money why wouldn't you just do that the pressure when it comes to money because a lot of big youtubers they get like pr and management and editors and all that stuff and they kind of have to pay them so they'll take less of a cut with the money that they get from youtube which obviously they're not really interested in and then they have to pay the other guys so how do you do that well if you can produce even more content now because you have people actually taking care of all the other stuff then it's way easier to put out content but then you also have to make interesting content all the time so it's actually way easier just to do what's easy so you're minimizing the amount of work you're doing but you're uh, your payments are getting higher so if you you minimize it even more like spread it out you'll actually gain more because you're still going over like you're still paying the other people but you as a person is still making more because now you have other people to do all the social media and the pr and the management and the editing and all that stuff and the whole thing that i also mentioned at the start of this video is about the authenticity again the important part about youtube is getting a sneak peek into someone's life but when does the sneak peek not get into a sneak peek but become a brand like i'm just looking at a brand a content machine and when I'm talking about quality and sneak peek, you know, there's obviously people like Mr. Beast and KSI and all that stuff, which are extremely popular. Well, also Logan Paul is an amazing example because obviously he's extremely popular, but I'm not really counting those people in because they're not making content for me. They're making content for children, even though how much they want to argue that they're not. I used to work at a gas station when Prime came out. There was like, first of all, we were sold out in like the first two hours and it was only children. I think the oldest person that came to buy prime was like 12 everyone else was like seven so they can say whatever they want and they can go box as much as they want and they can talk shit to ufc fighters as much as they want at the end of the day they're still making children's content and also if you're an adult watching logan paul like bro <laughs> fucking start a family get out <laughs> you know do something um here at the end i would like just to touch on a quick subject and i don't want to dwell too much into it but I've noticed a trend. There's this really big YouTuber. I think he's from the Netherlands. He uh, makes like children. Oh, well, it's not children's content, but it's children's content. That's another video I'm thinking about making is uh, we're all watching children's content. But that's like, um, beside the point. There's this Dutch YouTuber who does uh, like gameplay stuff like that, right? And he is in the middle of working on not making videos anymore himself but getting an ai to do everything so it's not him in the videos it's an ai which is mimicking him it's an ai that understands his humor and is writing the scripts it's not him editing the videos it's an ai and so on and so forth and he even put it a video out where everything was made by ai and he was so proud of himself like he did something but you're not that's just saying i would like to have all the money but i don't want to do any work which is fucking insane bro like Am I the only one that thinks that's fucking crazy? Like, if I was watching a guy and I realized that all of his videos was AI, I would, like, instantly unsubscribe. I also feel like it's, like, madly unethical. Like, people actually putting time in to make videos, write manuscripts and everything, editing. And then this guy's like, yeah, but I have 10 million subscribers and I can just get an AI to do everything and then I'll make even more money. It's like passive income. I would probably kill him. <laughs> you know? <laughs> if I... If I look up into the sky at night and see, like, a, a McDonald's ad, I'm becoming a terrorist. If I met a guy like that talking to me at a bar how an AI is making him money, first of all, I would try to do it myself. And second of all, I would probably beat the shit out of him. Because that's, like, so unethical. That's like going down to Red Cross, buying the clothes, and then reselling it for more. Bro, come on. So, in conclusion, I feel, like, kind of sorrowful. Like, if I'm gonna be real for a second... And not that I'm not real at the other 15 minutes. But if I'm going to be real for a second, I, I get like kind of sad thinking about this because there's so many people that I really liked and looked up to 
and stuff like that. And over the years, I'm not sure if it's me getting older and then noticing this stuff or if it's like truly a trend that is happening. But I do get quite sad thinking about what I used to love and adore is getting like ripped away from me. Man. Aww. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, then please like and subscribe. And other than that, uh, I hope to see you in the next one, which will hopefully be in a week uh, if I finish my exams. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.